now in my justice is having to look at this. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, I start with and I extend my greetings to you all. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. You. First and foremost, I sincerely thank the organizers of today's event, SOAS Pakistan Society and Bloomsbury Pakistan for inviting me and extending me the honor of addressing you. This has also provided me with an opportunity to getting to know you or some of you at least and the added pleasure of visiting SOAS again after 14 years. This is where my daughter obtained her undergraduate LLB degree 14 years ago and from here she went on to next door to do a LLM at UCL and a bar making her the first woman to become a barrister from the province of Balochistan, my province in Pakistan. Uh, my father was the first barrister from Balochistan at a time when it was not easy to travel, catching a steamship from the port of Karachi. He came from Pishin, which is about two, 600 miles from Karachi, close to the border of Afghanistan. Then it was British Imperial India. So it was quite a journey to get here <laughs> and on the topic of International Women's Day. So I'm just uh, here to, sad to say, uh, performance of Pakistan is abysmal. I'm a great believer in, there is no point in being the, the proverbial ostrich and ignore the problems. You must face up to the problems, you must realize what is wrong and only then will you address uh, the problem. And that is what we should do and there is a global gender gap index uh, which is I think issued by the World Economic Forum <clears throat> uh, in its global gender gap report of 2021 out of 156 countries that it surveyed Pakistan came close to the bottom at number 153 this is shocking for a country which gained independence through a progressive leadership in which women were very much involved and in leadership roles as well. The non-discriminatory equality principle, doctor of theology, but I think this is the only example of a main religion incorporating something which has been established by a woman, a ritual established by a woman. Uh, I, I would like to be corrected, but I have not been able to discover any so far. And then we have the great, I mean, it doesn't end, it's not in, our, in isolation. The, the most revered of women in the Holy Quran, Lady Maryam, may Allah be pleased with her, is mentioned 34 times in the Quran, the mother of Prophet uh, Jesus Isa, much more than she is mentioned in the Bible. And then I will just, uh, before concluding, uh, refer to a hadith of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And this is relevant again for the International Women's Day. However large the faith of man increases, his regard for women increases. I'll repeat it. However large the faith of man increases, his regard for women increases. So this is an integral part of the faith. Uh, and we must acknowledge great women like Asma Jangi, and one thing which if you don't, if her daughter does not mind my saying so, she was a great troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> and judges were terrified of her. <laughs> so uh, I say that uh, in, in, in uh, appreciation of her. Uh, so a bright future can only be secured when systems of oppression are dismantled when gendered violence, misogyny and abuse are punished in accordance with the law. Asma Jangi had indeed set an example when she demonstrated that tyranny is not unsurmountable. The judiciary, like our electoral, electoral system, is a vehicle to secure the fundamental rights of all. The only future I would like to imagine 
is one in which persecution and autocracy ends. Thank you for patiently hearing me and I once again want to thank the organizers. Uh, my question is that judiciary is also part of judiciary is also part of the society, and so you know there is an evolution of of people, the kind of judges that come up. Uh, you mentioned politicization of the judiciary, but there is another problem, yet another problem, which is a, which is corruption, which seems to to have also seeped into the judiciary. I'm just wondering that what do you think that from 2007 onwards, how do you look at the judiciary? Are you satisfied? I mean, how, and, and how do you see uh, what kind of institution it has evolved into? When one of the problems is that it sees itself, sets it up uh, above all forms of accountability. Uh, you know, it's very, judges are very happy when they're not held accountable. I think like every other institution, maybe uh, there are different viewpoints within the institution. Whether I'm satisfied or not, I think should not be important. It, the question should be whether you are satisfied, whether the people of Pakistan are satisfied. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I go and you go to a shop or something and at the end there's these smiley faces you properly served, etc. And then there's an unhappy face like this, a happy face like this. Maybe we should have some sort of thing outside the Supreme Court, the courts, and were you satisfied, were you dealt with properly? Uh, personally, if a person is satisfied, that person has stopped living. You should never be satisfied because then you stop striving. So it's not my satisfaction, it is whether, I mean, if I say I'm satisfied and then you can criticize me that okay, we haven't done this, this, that, the other, or I'm not satisfied, it doesn't really matter. It is the perception, the understanding, because the cases which get into the public domain are very few. There are hundreds of cases one decides which you know nothing about, which pattern nothing to you. But the cases which come into the public eye are the ones which determine <laughs> uh, whereby you played us. The other cases, you would not even know what the case was about. I mean, that's a, a run of the business that we do. So I would not want to ever be satisfied. If I was satisfied, I wouldn't be part of the judiciary. I won't be. So I think if I can do something, that's the only reason which uh, took me to abandon my career virtually overnight. I was sent to uh, Baluchistan. I was asked, can you go there because you don't have a... Uh, any, any, we don't have the judiciary there anymore. But if you recollect that they had taken oath under Dogar and they, all of them resigned, so I went. I was the only judge in the high, uh, high court in Rajasthan initially and then appointed uh, judges, including the first uh, judge in the province's history, onto the Rajasthan High Court, who went on to become the Chief Justice of the province as well, Justice Tahira uh, uh, Safdar. So, an evolution. Yes, first of all, I think we must acknowledge mistakes because unless you don't acknowledge mistakes, uh, I mean, I will use, uh, I mean, first of all, you should acknowledge what you don't know, then you acknowledge mistakes. The famous Sadhis of the Prophet to say, I don't know is half of knowledge. So if we don't, I mean, just kind of defend, keep institu every institution keeps defending themselves, that's not a strength of the institution that's the weakness of the institution so i don't know what uh, i don't know if i have answered and as far as corruption is concerned i i don't i, I mean uh, i think that is unforgivable uh, in the judiciary more so i would say more so than any other institution in pakistan and why do i say that is because other institutions you not you don't expect to be given justice but then when, when you go to the court of law you expect to be treated justly honestly and fairly uh, again i'll say something about myself which i feel a bit reluctant about when i became chief justice in Baluchistan, uh, there were like 400 odd employees of the high court and i said please treat the people with respect treat them as you are their 
uh, host and they are your guests. And uh, and I told them the next thing. I said, no one comes to court happy. Everyone has a problem they come to. They don't come on to see my face. They don't want to see your face. So please serve them. Please serve them. And I said, there is another place where people generally don't go uh, for purposes of joy and that's a hospital. But there too, there is an exception when a child is born. So I said, in our case, there is no exception. So I, I agree with you. There's much that one can improve upon and and uh, I think that all wraps it up. I hope I've answered your uh, question. I just leave a sample. <laughs>